about payroll, you talk about market size, all you're doing is letting them off the hook. They love when you do that. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. The Pirates and the Brewers meet tonight and the next couple of days for the final home series of the year at PNC Park. It'll be attended by next to nobody, but it'd be worth some people's while to at least pay a little bit of attention because the Brewers are not only everything that the Pirates could be, they're what the Pirates should be. And I'm not saying that because they're just having some nice season. They've got 89 wins, the Central Division Championship, their sixth playoff berth in the past seven years. And they did it this year, despite having their manager pilfered away, Craig Council going to the Cubs, losing their two most talented starting pitchers, Corbin Burns, the Cy Young winner, being traded to the Orioles, Brandon Woodruff being shut down to injury. The National League's reliever of the year in 2023, Devin Williams, was shut down for four months to injury. The National League's batting leader, Christian Yelich, shut down the past couple of months to injury. What else we got? Payroll, they're a little bit over $100 million. Pirates are currently in the 90 range. It's not that big of a difference. Market size, Milwaukee is two-thirds the size of Pittsburgh when it comes to metro market size two-thirds the size of our city. What's the difference? Yeah, I know. This isn't all that complicated. But what ends up happening is everybody just kind of reduces the entire thing to Bob Nutting is Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. He's a bad owner. And by that, I'm not even referring to payroll. He's bad at hiring. He's terrible at accountability, other than once every 12 years, I guess. And he doesn't instill in any way, shape, or form, any urgency for the team to win. But that ain't it. I mean, it's at the top. It's a factor for sure. But if Nutting hires Matt Arnold, the other finalist out of the two finalists for his GM search in late 2019, instead of Ben Charrington, we're looking at a... I don't know if it'd be completely the same scenario because of those other shortcomings that I'd mentioned. But it sure wouldn't be this. Just look at nothing other than first base. Just this past offseason, the Brewers needed a first baseman. They knew that. They didn't think they were getting much out of Rowdy Telez. They didn't believe that a couple of injuries, hand injuries, stuff like that, were the reason that he didn't perform well in 2023. So they just let him walk. They, in turn, go out and spend $39 million over three years for Reese Hoskins. They knew they didn't have much that they needed to fill out on the diamond, but what they did need to fill out, they were committed. So they spent money. Same money the Pirates had. Same money Charrington had. If Hoskins is getting 13, I can come back at you that our oldest Chapman got 10.5. Which of the two do you think is going to contribute more to the cause? The Brewers also had this wondrous development, and I mean the term development literally, in Jackson Churio, who's 20 years old, coming up through their system. A Latin American prospect. What do you know? Remember those? And he's been phenomenal for them. Now, not just for his age. He's just been phenomenal, period. No excuses. No whining. No references to, quote, the way we need to do things in Pittsburgh. End quote, to borrow a phrase that Charrington's used more than once in the past. No references, even though they're fair to Major League Baseball's broken economic system, the Brewers want to win, so they find the right people, and the right people do the right thing for the right reasons, meaning winning. Not ego, not process, just plain old winning. They're really good at it. They have a reputation around Major League Baseball as being really good at it. 
They scout, they acquire, they develop, they instruct, they motivate, they focus at a level where they can win and make the playoffs six out of seven years. What's the Pirates' excuse? Is it the time frame? Because Arnold took the Milwaukee job within the same time span that Charrington took the Pittsburgh job. And even when things seemingly went really, really against the Brewers, as they have throughout 2024, they just kept winning. No excuses in Milwaukee. No excuses in Cleveland. No excuses in Kansas City. No excuses in Baltimore. No excuses in St. Petersburg, Florida. No excuses in San Diego. Only in Pittsburgh, it would seem. When we come back, J1Q. It's Gun Storage Check Week. Help prevent unwanted access to your firearms. No one wants their unsecured gun to be used in an accident, a suicide, or a crime. Use lockboxes, safes, and locks to secure your firearms. Learn more at GunStorageCheck.org. That's GunStorageCheck.org. Brought to you by NSSF, the Firearm Industry Trade Association. Today's J1Q comes from Dave, who says, DK, you've reported that Bob Nutting paid $17.2 million for everyone to go away in 2019. Are we roughly in the same neighborhood for Ben Charrington, Derek Shelton, Andy Haynes, and others in 2024? I know you might not have that type of information right now, but if it is substantially higher and it might pose a real risk financially or even dissuade Nutting from making a similar move this year, I would think not, but it's not my money. And Dave, you're right that I don't have particulars on how much it would cost. I didn't have particulars at the time until after it happened. And even then, the only figure I've reported is the sum total. Now, that said, I'd have every reasonable cause to believe that the figure this time around would be significantly lower. And here's why. If you go back to 2019, you'll recall that those who were fired, and by the way, the people who I count into that 17.2 million figure were Frank Coonley, team president, Neil Huntington, general manager, Kyle Stark, de facto general manager, and Clint Hurdle, the manager. That's it. It's those four. Now, the reason that Coonley was fired was he was so opposed to nutting firing Huntington that he tethered himself to Huntington and said, if he goes, I go, to which nutting said, okay, you both go. Nutting actually had no design initially on firing Coonley, but that drove the price up, obviously. Your person running the entire operation was going to make more than your GM. I don't see any scenario at all in which Travis Williams would be in trouble. So the people who would go, if you're talking about a similar event to 2019, would be Charrington, Shelton, and you almost can't even really count the coaching staff. I know you mentioned Andy Haynes because all these guys are on one or two-year deals, and it's rare for there to be a two-year deal. So in all likelihood, you're just replacing salary with salary when you're talking about coaches. Charrington, of course, would have a couple of years left on his contract since he was signed to that extension by Charrington under the cover of that convenient, nice start that they had in 2023. And Charrington, I have no earthly idea. I really don't. I, I have never once heard from anybody what the term of his contract is, let alone the dollars involved. But it's been five years for him. And five years is kind of what a GM gets. Not in all cases, but in a lot of cases. It doesn't mean he wasn't given some kind of extension under the table or whatever, although that would be the kind of thing that would emerge publicly. But listen, for all I know, the entire cost of doing all of this could just be Shelton's two additional seasons, which would be 
a theoretical drop in the bucket. But I'm emphasizing here anew, I do not know that. I'll always try to be honest with you about stuff that I know, stuff that I think, stuff that I eh, doubt, and then stuff that I flat out don't know. I don't know this. One way or another, I would hope that the bigger question here is not can you afford to cut them? It's can you afford to keep them? Can you afford to keep the GM who just this weekend ducked out on his weekly radio show, a tradition started by the great Joel Brown 50 years ago and put one of his surrogate lawyers on, Kevin Graves, to speculate publicly about signing <laughs> Paul Skeens to some long-term contract? I mean, are they wearing clown shoes as they walk around the building? That's what I want to know. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. Going to do another one of these tomorrow. 